Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the AUVSI's conference in Washington, D.C., and it's my honor to be talking to Major General Richard Kaiser uh, of the United States Army, who is the Deme uh, Deputy Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, one of the uh, one of history's greatest engineering uh, and construction organizations. Sir, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me here today. Yeah, we've been around since the founding of our country, so we've been around a while. Uh, yeah, and I think that just the extraordinary works you guys do, but I think also folks have a tendency of forgetting that whether it was the development of the atom bomb or so many other important projects. It's been the Army Corps of Engineers uh, that's done it. You gave a fascinating presentation here, right? The big focuses at this conference are uh, unmanned systems, artificial intelligence, and, and autonomy. Talk to us about the learning curve you guys are on and how you expect to use uh, autonomous unmanned AI in both your whether it's disaster relief, you know, you, you mentioned in your remarks that Hurricane Maria was a wake up in terms of you know, not being as quick to employ, for example, unmanned systems for reconnaissance and uh, work. Talk to us about the role you see in aut unmanned autonomous systems, both on the civil application, which is so critical, but also on the military application of things, given that you guys are the heavy construction uh, uh, force of the nation. Right, so first of all, we try to be a learning organization. So after we went to Puerto Rico, and we said, you know, we should have used unmanned systems to, to save time, money, and then that, that amounts to you know, safety as well for our people that are out doing these uh, jobs. So we want to learn from what we've done in the past. And what I said earlier is where we need help is those technologies that can see where we can't right now. You know, we're all familiar with the aerial you know, photography. We're not as familiar with the radar, the LIDAR, and the systems that can see underwater and under the ground. And I'll tell you, those are some areas that we're very interested in moving forward on. Now, if you look at conventional battlefield that you talked about and where we need autonomous vehicles, Corps of Engineers is already working on that. So one of the things you saw in that video was a Marine Corps platform that's unmanned uh, that we can use to put on our mine clearing line charge or our MICLIC so that we can uh, put a hole through a minefield to keep America's troops safe if we're ever in combat. As you think to the future, I um, mean, when you look at uh, mines or other things to, to stop people or vehicles from going where we want them to, I think you'll find that most of the human community wants a human in the loop, whether it's the United Nations or others. So I'm not sure if we're ready to be fully autonomous with the use of those types of systems, but we could certainly use automated systems in terms of platform delivery, and whether or not there's still a human in the loop could be very far away. So I think those are just some of the things I would start you off with. If we look at construction, we spend a huge amount of time with men and women on the ground doing quality control, quality assurance. How can we automate a system to, ha to run down the length of the construction to determine if the wall is at the right dimensions? Is the concrete to standard? All these types of things are things to consider for industry. Um, how much on the uh, combat construction side of things can automated systems uh, be used? Because if you think about it, you know, everybody has a tendency of thinking uh, about hypersonic weapons, how to increase reach. At the end of the day, nothing that would involve a high intensity conflict does not involve you guys yeah in the front lines. In fact, soft guys go in, you guys are the next guys to build that runway, to build that port facility. Talk to us about the role and how you're also preparing for that part of the mission. Okay, a couple of different things. So first of all, uh, if you want to talk about entry into a theater, uh, our unmanned systems can rapidly determine you know, what kind of munitions were used on an airfield, how deep are the craters, what do we need to repair them. So we're already doing that and making progress. Let's look at uh, some automated building tools. So right now our engineering research and development center headquartered uh, down in Vicksburg, its lab that is up in Champaign-Urbana has developed an automated building machine that is almost like a 3D printer for plastic except it's concrete. So you can envision us moving forward into a theater of operations and being able to rapidly put protective housing around our troops that are in harm's way. That's a really good example that I think is worth looking into, but we're doing it now. And uh, last question, because I know you got to go. So what are the top three things uh, when you look writ large, the Army Corps of Engineers wants to get from industry or the technology base, right? You talked about uh, the engineering center in Vicksburg that consolidates some stuff that all the districts worldwide were doing. What are your priority, what are your biggest problems you need help solving, whether it's going to come from industry or whether it's going to come from academia? So I would tell you from a water management perspective, uh, one of the biggest things that we have a challenge with is transport of sediment. All right, it's heavy, it, it, it's always where you don't want it to be. How can we move that fast with automated systems so that we can reduce costs and keep our rivers and uh, lakes open? And, and that's a huge problem right there. I think the other thing I would tell you is um, 
how do you help us see where we can't see right now? Right now, our ability to see underwater is okay, but it's not as good as it can be. And when we're talking about underwater construction, we're identifying challenges to substructure. We need better detail than we can get right now. And then the third one I'll tell you is, how do we see under the ground? This was a huge problem as we were developing our mine detection capability, and I don't think we're where we need to be yet. But that is an excellent way to use automated or unmanned vehicles to check for mines that are in the ground to keep our troops safe. Um, last question, and this is a climatological, without getting um, a climate change uh, mechanics or the debate on that. From an investment standpoint, how does your budget and strategic planning have to change, given that we're seeing these kinds of events? I mean, I think most Americans, you know, if these floods had been on America's coast, there would have been a lot more coverage, but the flooding has been devastating, economically devastating. At the end of the day, you guys are the ones who are going to have to be part of that solution integrally. How is this changing your strategic planning cycles, given that some of these floods and storms we're seeing you know, our once a century are now happening like multiple times in one season. Well, we've seen over time there's wet periods in our history and then there's dry periods. And don't be surprised when we turn around and head into a drought. And so our key really is to look at resilience and how do we build the structures that we're building, whether it's a levee, whether it's a dam, or whether it's a building, to be resilient to the effects of changing weather patterns. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're doing. I think forums like we just had today are very good because it allows people to hear, and I said, we live in a physical world, how can you help us, right? And that's, I think, the key. So whatever uh, industry can bring to bear to help us be more cost effective for our country, I think, is the better. Major General Richard Kaiser, who's the Deputy Commanding General of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Sir, it's an honor and pleasure talking to you, and good to be with you, uh, good, good, uh, good to be with you and, and look forward to maybe visiting Vicksburg one of these you days. Bet. Thank you, sir.